you guys welcome to this week's episode i just got back from work not too long ago i just finished up a couple of meetings and today's thursday so weekend's getting here soon tomorrow is the busiest day at the office so i'm definitely gonna try to get in bed early tonight because recently i have not been able to wake up for my life like i set my alarm and then I snooze it for a couple of hours. The other day, I literally, I woke up to go to the gym and then <laughs> I put on my workout clothes on because I was like, okay, if I put on my workout clothes and I get out from bed, I'm gonna go to the gym. I did that. And then I said, okay, let me take like a five minute nap because it's too early. Like I woke up like way too early and I fell asleep for two hours. So I don't know what's going on with me recently. Waking up is like the hardest thing ever. So tonight I'm gonna aim to get in bed early. Again, like a couple of vlogs ago, I have no idea what I'm gonna do this weekend. I know that I have a dinner tomorrow with Anate. She's a friend from Babson and that's pretty much it. Honestly, just try to rest, try to chill. I had such an intense week, but I'm kind of glad because the days went by super fast and I really wanted just to get this week over with because next week I have a lot of fun things. I'm traveling for the weekend. So it was good to just get it out of the way, but it's nice to be back home, back in Miami after traveling for my birthday and everything. Thank you so much to everyone that wished me a happy birthday. And now I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna like chill for like five minutes. I'm gonna eat these strawberries and then I'm gonna go to the gym because I didn't go this morning. I snoozed my alarm again. And then <laughs> we'll go to the gym. We'll hang out with my sister. My dad's getting here tonight, so we have to go pick him up at the airport. And I think that's pretty much it for today. I don't know what to I do. I think he's just I had an exam to look tomorrow, just and like I'm freaking out. out. We broke up last night. I'm pretty sure meal. she was talking about shit about ghosts. I ought to get a dog to do, do from my bed today. today. But oh, they make fun of shit. I wish I could feel go back in time and change things. And yeah, that's what I would do. Just don't quote me on that. I finished the gym a while ago and then we had dinner at home we had pasta and now my sister and i came to muse tea so muse tea is a bubble tea place it's literally the best bubble tea ever we get shaken iced tea i'll show you guys my order once it gets here my sister's picking them up right now because i am super illegally parked right in front of the place is that i thought it was the cops behind me but it's not the cops behind me Cause I'm like, so I'm so not supposed to be parked here, but I'm waiting for her really quickly. Um, we love, like, this is like such a sister plan, like little sister date that we love to do coming to go get some bubble tea. The Muse tea is like in Miami beach. So it's right next to her home. I know that there's another Muse tea in Briggle city center. And I think they have a location in Aventura, but we always just come to the Miami beach one. Or if we're in Brickle, we'll go to the Briggle city center one. But I think we get these like once a week at least. Like we love this place. We love this bubble tea. And we're also getting one for my dad so that when he gets home, he has one. She's like talking to the guy because the guy knows us by now. He like knows our order and everything. Like we walk in, he's like the same. And we're like, yep, the same. He's from Colombia too. Entonces como que nos ponemos a hablar y we talk to him. But I'm not supposed to be here. I'm like in the middle of the road too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, I already started drinking it, so I'm so sorry, but this is what it looks like in a way. And I always get a mango black iced tea with 0% sugar, and I get tapioca and then strawberry pop. And I usually get lychee pop too, but I just got strawberry pop this time. You do have to measure out like the percentage of sugar very carefully. The first time we, I remember we went to Muse Tea, we got like 100% sugar. And as soon as my sister and I tried it, we were like, this is literally diabetes in a cup like it was so so sweet we couldn't drink it we had to ask them to change it and then i think zero percent sugar is fine like the tea is sweet enough with the boba and with everything i think it's sweet enough but that's what i always get that's what my sister always gets and my dad gets some my dad gets some like weird shit with like a cream on top and like he hates tapioca so he doesn't get tapioca but i'm we're on the ferry now we're on our way home I think I'm just gonna take an everything shower, get in bed early, chill, probably watch a movie. I don't know. It's 9.30 right now. So by the time we get there, I shower, get in my PJs, do my skincare. Perfect time to go to bed.
dije que, que... dinner with Anate. Happy Friday. I will talk to you guys later. I'm running super late. Mwah. Good morning, you guys. It's Monday now, so I have not vlogged in a couple of days. I feel like the last time I vlogged was Friday. I think Friday was the last time I vlogged. So I didn't vlog on Saturday or Sunday. Honestly, don't even know why. Um, so now it's Monday. I'm on my way to the office. I went to the gym this morning woke up not as early as i wanted to wake up but i woke up early went to the gym and now i'm getting ready on the ferry i have so many things to do at the office because i'm traveling on friday that's going to be next week's vlog but since i'm leaving friday i'm not going to be working on friday so i just have so many things that i need to set up there's a lot of things going on at the office i feel like a lot of you guys have asked me this and i feel like i've told you guys before but i might not have but i'm pretty sure i did but I work at a medical device startup, which is my dad's startup, which he founded not too long ago. And he does not have time to work like for the startup and at the startup and just get things up and running because he works full time. So he just told me like, here, like basically like you take over, you figure it out. So it's just me, we don't have a team yet. It's just me grinding it out, figuring it out, which I love because that's literally what I went to college for, which is entrepreneurship. I love creating new things, not necessarily being a part of things, but starting things from the bottom up, building them from the ground up. So I love it. I love the fact that it's super hectic. I love the fact that I'm working in all areas of the company, but it's just me and it's a lot, but it's really cool. I don't know. I like it. At the same time, I've been a little bit upset with myself because in my like work area of my life, just everything with the startup and the podcast and like YouTube, TikTok, whatever, I feel like I'm doing such a good job at that and I have it very balanced out and I'm not being lazy, I'm being very productive, I get all my things that I need to get done. But when it comes to my personal life, like habits, a routine, waking up early, going to the gym, eating healthy, things like that. I feel like I've sort of let myself go, which I don't understand why because I've never been like that. Like all throughout college, my entire life, like even in high school and things like that, I've always been super disciplined. Like if I tell myself like, this is the routine, you're gonna wake up early, you're gonna go to the gym, you're gonna do your self care, you're gonna read a book, you're gonna whatever. Like all of that wellness aspect of my life, I've always been super good at doing it and at just establishing that routine. But recently I've just, I don't do anything. like. I try to, but then I'm I either like I snoozed my alarm for too long or I didn't eat as healthy as I wanted to or whatever it is. And then I'm stressed 
and I'm running around and I just don't feel like I have everything like under control in a way that might just be me as a perfectionist like wanting to have everything under control but it makes me feel good when I know that I have an established routine when I know that I'm doing all of the things that I want to be doing and then when I don't get them done it is frustrating so this week I'm gonna try and do like a like a 75 hard but for wellness and just like my personal routine but a 30 day hard because it takes 27 days to establish a habit I love reading self-help books and there's this book that I really love um I forget what it's called but it's about habits and it takes 27 days to establish a habit so for 30 days I'm gonna really focus grind it out I think it's gonna be a little bit hard with traveling to keep up that routine but we'll see I'm traveling with my boyfriend and he is also very disciplined so that might be like I don't know I feel like that could help me to actually get it done where's my brush oh did I leave it at home <sighs> Brick. all right well I guess we're just gonna use my fingers but that's just a little rant for today on how I've been feeling and I don't know I feel like it's my fault that I let myself go in that sense of just having a routine, having my things, being disciplined. I hate not feeling disciplined and I have not been very disciplined. So we're gonna fix that ASAP because I'm not, the lazy girl era needs to get the hell out of here. It's not making me feel good. We need to go back to my disciplined grind time era. I was watching a lot of like my TikToks from college and I used to do so many things in a day and now I feel like I just work, but then I'm not doing all of the other things that I want to be doing. Does that make sense? I don't know. It might be too early and I'm just ranting a lot. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to finish my makeup. And I will see you guys later. I just got back home and I'm running over to the market really quickly to grab some spinach for dinner. And then I have to head back, have dinner super quick because I have so many things to do. I have a bunch of brand deals and like videos that I need to film for that and send those in. I have to film an advice segment for don't quote me on that, edit that, upload that. And I wanna go to bed super early because like I told you guys, I wanna improve my habits. And if I wanna wake up early, I have to go to bed early. So hopefully I can get all of that done before 10 p.m. Okay, well, there was no spinach at the market. So we'll just go back home and tell my mom that because she's cooking dinner. So I have no idea what she's gonna do about that. Um, but it's seven and I wanna go to bed by 10. That's three hours. Can I get everything done in three hours and also do my skincare and watch TikTok before going to bed. I feel like I need a solid 15 to 30 minutes of TikTok before going to bed. And I'm not one to stay on TikTok for like 20 hours. Like I know some people say that they do like a 30 minute before going to bed and then that turns into three hours. I'm not the type to do that. Like I will literally fall asleep watching TikTok if I'm tired, but I do need my solid or YouTube. Honestly, recently, like I used to be such a TikTok kind of girly, like a lot of fast content, but recently I just prefer longer videos to watch. I feel like that's why I've also been putting a lot more effort into YouTube and into Spotify than TikTok and then like making TikToks just because I prefer watching more YouTube so I want to create more YouTube videos but I don't know if everybody else does the same thing I feel like everybody's still on like the TikTok trend but for me it's just I prefer like a more calm longer video than such fast-paced content that just kills my brain cells <laughs> but that might just be me
You guys, I am so sorry that today's episode did not get posted at its usual time. I fell a little bit behind with filming. I traveled this weekend. I was in Panama. I literally just got back. That's going to be next week's episode. So I'm so sorry, but it's here. The episode is here. So let's get right into it. It's going to be a very short and sweet episode. We're going to talk about something very specific. This week's episode is for Coaches Don't Play. So we're talking about relationships and one relationship that is very important throughout our teenage years and throughout our whole lives are friendships. And I remember like not too long ago, like a couple of weeks back, I got a DM from one of you asking to talk about this on one of the episodes and being friendship breakups. But more specifically, when it comes to friendship breakups, just having to interact with that friend after you're no longer friends. And that is something that happens to most of us, especially like in high school and college. Those are times where if you break up with your friend and she goes to your same school, you're going to have to see her around. Even if you don't have classes with her, but especially if you do have classes with her, you're going to have to see her like around at lunch, maybe at parties. Maybe you guys have friends in common. So the question was just like, I don't know how to handle it. And like, I don't know how to deal with it. Like we're no longer friends, but I still have to deal with her. Like, I still have to see her all the time. Like, what would you do? Like, has that happened to you? And of course, it's happened to me. It happened to me in high school and it's happened to me in college. I'm going to give a very recent example that happened to me in college with a very big friendship breakup. And I still had to see her around. You're going to have to interact with these people. And it doesn't matter if the friendship breakup was a mutual thing or if they're no longer friends with you because it was like their decision, or if they're the ones that like messed up, they're the ones that hurt you and you're the one that cut them off. Whichever the scenario may be, this is how I go about like dealing with friends who I'm no longer friends with. So this was somebody who screwed me over and I'm just going to give that example because I feel like that's the toughest one to deal with, but it applies to all breakup scenarios, like no matter what. So we stopped being friends and the semester after, so we stopped being friends like during first semester of senior year. And that semester we didn't have any classes together. So I didn't really have to see her that much. She lived in my same apartment building. So every like once in a while I bumped into her like walking around. And that this was like very close to the friendship breakup. So whenever we saw each other, it was just like, you know, like that little awkward, like smile, like pretending like you didn't see them there. But that literally happened like only once. Like we never bumped into each other. And then second semester of that same year, second semester, senior year, I had a class with her. The way that I go about friendship breakups, like, let me tell you, this was definitely one of the most hurtful friendship breakups ever. It felt like it was like worse than an actual breakup. It completely shattered me. This was a person that I loved so much and really, really hurt me and did me wrong. And I had a class with her. So the first day I walk into the class and I see her sitting there. We hadn't talked in months and it was right after Christmas break. And the way that I went about it, even though this was somebody who really hurt me, I went up to her and I was like, hey, let's call her, I don't know, Karen. <laughs> Just the first name that came to mind. Okay. I was like, hey, Karen, like, how are you? And she was like, good. Like, she did not expect me to talk to her, you know? So she was like, hey, like, I'm good. And I was like, okay, I'm glad. And there was a seat right next to her that was empty. And I asked her, I was like, is the seat taken? Like, can I sit here? And she was like, yeah, of course. Like, please, like, go ahead. Like, this person knows that they screwed me over. Um, so she was like, yeah, like, sit there. I sat down and she asked me, she was like, how was your break? And I was like, good. Like, I broke my wrist because I broke my wrist skiing. So I was like, good. I broke my wrist. I had a cast. And she was like, oh, no. And I was like, yeah, but it's fine. Um, how was your Christmas break? So we had a small little interaction. And keep in mind, like, this is somebody that I saw that I don't like her because I don't hold grudges against people. But it's somebody who did really hurt me. So I was just being polite. And I feel like that's the best way to go about it when you break up with a friend and you still have to see them is just being polite. Saying hi to somebody doesn't take away from you. This is the time where you got to let your ego and your pride just like simmer down because also the more I feel like the more you, I don't know, like make it awkward and like side eye them or like look at them the wrong way or like you're I don't know, like, the, yeah, the more like awkward you make it and the less you talk to them, the less you say hi to them, the more it's obvious that you don't want to talk to them. I feel like that's just giving both the situation and them more power. If I don't talk to her, if I don't say hi, if I'm not nice to her, if I'm not polite, because this is just a matter of like being cordial to somebody, that's giving it way more importance. 
But the fact that I just sat down there, like, I didn't care about it. Because, like, honestly, like, all right, fine, you screwed me over. Like, that was really hurtful. But I'm not going to let that, like, bring me down for the rest of my life. Like, I let it go. I moved on. If you want to stay stuck in the problem, you stay stuck in the problem. Like, I'm just going to be polite. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to say hi to you because you're a human being, you know? Like, that's just saying hi. And keep in mind, like, don't forget, we're talking about somebody who really, really hurt me. It doesn't take away from me. Like, it, it's not going to make me less of a person if I say hi to her. I think that on the contrary, it makes me a better person if I say hi to her. It gives me, in a way, like, the upper hand in the situation. If I were to just, like walk into the room, not look at her, like sit across the classroom. Like she would be like, oh, like, yeah, like she's pissed. Like she doesn't want to talk to me. Like she has beef. Like you hold the grudge. I love the saying that's like in order to fight, it takes two people. So we had our thing. We were friends. We're no longer friends. But if I have to see you, I'm just going to be polite. I'm going to say hi. Maybe like you don't have to start like the small little chit chat and like the small little like how was your Christmas break like I feel like that you don't have to go like all the way over there like that's a bit of an extreme but I don't see the point in being bitchy to them just because you're no longer friends it's something that happened it's in the past but you're the better person here you choose how much importance you want to give a person and the more you act like you really don't want to talk to her and you really don't like her you're giving her way too much importance into your life it's like if you say hi it's almost like I don't really care about it anymore like I don't really care about the situation and it doesn't affect me as much as you think that it affects me like I'm good I'm fine that doesn't mean that you have to be friends with them ever again like we're not gonna be friends and I even remember she told like a couple of friends that we have in common, like mutual friends, she told them like, oh, like Gabby said hi to me. Like she sat down like right next to me and like we talked for a little bit. Like I think, I don't know, we might be able to like rekindle something. And those friends in common came up to me and they told me that. And I was like, that's never going to happen. Like we are never going to be friends. This is somebody that is out of my life, like for good, like forever, like never say never, but like out of my life, like it would take so, so much for me to forgive her for what she did. But I'm always going to be polite and I'm always going to say hi, not bring her back into my life. But I don't see the point in just like ignoring her or like being rude to her. Like that would just bring me down to her same level. So hold your head up high. Be the better person in the situation. If you see them around, if you have to see them at lunch, if you have to see them at a party, if they're in your class, whatever it may be, just say hi. Show them that they don't hold that much power in your life. That sure, it was a situation that really hurt you, but you're over it. You're moving on. You're moved on with your life. And it's like saying hi to a fly on the wall. You say hi to so many people. Like a hi doesn't really mean much. So that's how I go about my friendship breakups and how I go about like dealing with friends who I still have to see around, who I still have to see all the time. Like if I bump into her when I go to Boston to visit my boyfriend, I'll say hi. We're never going to be friends again. But And trust me, when you're polite to people that you shouldn't be polite to and that you shouldn't really be nice to, it kind of blows them away. It kind of like, it's like a little shock in their head of like, why are they being nice to me after I screwed them over? Or like, why are they being nice to me after I cut them off? Or like, why are they being nice to me after like we stopped saying friends? And it's just because you're a good person. As simple as that. Not because you have any other intentions. So to the girl that asked that and to anybody watching this video, if you've ever gone through a friendship breakup and this is a person that you still have to interact with at some point and you still have to see around, the best way to go about it is giving it zero importance. And the simplest way of giving somebody zero importance is like treating them like there's nothing wrong. Like, that's it. You're just another person in my class. You're just another person at the party who I'm going to say hi to because it's beneath me to be a mean girl. It's beneath me to act the same way that you acted. It's beneath me to hurt you. So you just have to be polite. So I hope that helped. And that's usually what I do. That's just how I've always gone about it when I see them. We're not friends. We're never going to be friends again. But they don't deserve like that rage 
from me or like they they don't deserve it like it's not worth it like to me it's just like it was your loss you know like you lost a really good friend I know that I was a really good friend to you to me it's like their loss you know like I know that you lost a really good friend you probably know that you lost a really good friend but I'm always going to stay true to me and I'm always going to stay true to my values and my morals and the fact that you were rude to me is not going to make me like like sweep low to your same level. If that's the kind of human that you are, be that way. But I'm always going to stay me. So just say hi to them like like they mean nothing to you. Because at this point, they should mean nothing to you. So I hope that helped. That's how I go about it. And again, I am so sorry that this week's episode was late. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next week's episode was the trip to Panama. And hopefully I don't fall behind on filming and posting and anything. So yeah, I will see you guys next week.